Okay. So, hello and welcome to session three in our IBM Mobile Quality Assurance Open Beta study group. Uh, again, Mobile Quality Assurance, IBM Mobile Quality Assurance, it helps us helps uh, our clients continuously deliver mobile applications. And this study group is a means uh, of learning about this open beta technology through a series of weekly events, short weekly events. All of these events, as you can see on the slide here, have been recorded. Uh, slides, prior slides are available up on YouTube and um, uh, or on SlideShare, and then the recordings are available on YouTube. If you go just to the main landing page for the study group announcement, which is that link that's shown on the page, all of the links for prior content are there. What we're asking you today is to really, hopefully, you've had a chance to review that material before getting into today's session because today we will go ahead and actually instrument an application. Uh, we'll do it both in a live format demonstration, and then I also have a, uh, a uh, some experiences that I've documented as well in instrumenting another application. So, uh, and of course, this instrumentation is the key to making this capability work. So we'll look at that today in today's format. Uh, this session is being recorded. So, uh, again, for intent on posting it to YouTube, if you do not want to be recorded, do not speak or don't ask any questions, but we do plan on opening up for questions. Right now, all lines should be muted. When we get to a point where you have a question, you can hit star six and ask that question, and uh, we'll just go ahead and carry on. So, again, this is an open beta technology that we are looking at, so plans certainly may change in the future. But uh, right now, we're going to be talking about the capabilities that exist in the open beta, and certainly we hope that you all will enjoy and uh, take advantage of this open beta's time savings as it goes through this process. But kind of at a high level, something we talked about last week is sort of the before and after. Before mobile quality assurance, you know, testers uh, have to manually enter in a lot of information around defects, and certainly this is just one aspect of the mobile quality assurance open beta, and that's the bug reporting, which we talked about. There are some other capabilities that we're going to talk about in the future sessions, but just this capability alone uh, helps our uh, clients speed up the entry of defects by simply shaking their device, and that instantiates mobile uh, MQA and captures a screenshot and a lot of the information that's shown here at the top of the screen. And then you can annotate the entry and submit the item, and it logs that automatically. So the time savings are pretty significant as our teams go and create defect reports. As I mentioned, there are a lot of other features. We talked about those in a prior session. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and carry on to today's session, which is really all about instrumenting the application. So to take advantage of all the capabilities that we talk about here, the key step in today's session is instrumenting the application. And by instrumentation, it's really taking advantage of the SDK's uh, API and putting that into your application. And to demonstrate that here today, we have uh, uh, Stanton on the line. It looks like Stanton. Uh, do I have you? You might hit it. Have to hit star six. Oh, okay, I can hear you. Can yeah, how's it going? Good, good. Okay, I'm going to transfer control over to you now to uh, do this. Okay. In a very quick fashion here, and then I'll go ahead and talk about some of my other experiences instrumenting right. an existing uh, application that we often use for demonstration purposes. Excellent. Good to hear. So uh, my name is Stanton. Uh, I am uh, I am uh, one of the product marketing managers for this product, and uh, today I'm going to show you how to instrument the uh, instrument the application for Android. Now, um, oh, I do have control. Great. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Get that uh, get that process going really quickly. So when uh, when a developer is actually wanting to uh, to work with this application and begin to uh, and begin to include IBM MQA in their product, it's uh, it's the kind of thing that you know it takes a little bit of time for them to to learn the technology as it does with any technology. And I believe my screen is shared. That's good. It takes a little bit of time for them to learn this technology as it does for any technology. However, it's not exactly uh, it's not incredibly difficult to do. 
Um, I want to call your attention, first of all, to the, to the quality for mobile help topics. Uh, that are available for everyone who, uh, who has an interest in and wants to, uh, to, to learn more about the, uh, the IBM uh, Mobile Quality Assurance product. Um, if you go to qualityformobilehelp.com, this is, uh, these are the help topics for the purpose of the beta. They will be eventually migrating into, uh, into an IBM, uh, uh, repository when we go into the, uh, the final, uh, the final version of this. However, if you go to qualityformobilehelp.com, you can find complete help and information about everything there is to know about IBM MQA. Um, in particular, for developers, they're going to be very interested in the library installation section, which is right here. And I'll go ahead and go into this. And you'll find that we have documentation for Android, iOS, and Windows Phone. So if someone interested in doing, for example, Android development and learning how to instrument the application, can move into the Android section and find over here complete tutorials and information about actually using, configuring, and managing the API. Um, let me come back to this in a second. We're actually going to go through this in a moment, and I'll show you each of these steps and the information that's contained in them. Um, I'm going to jump over into a clip, and uh, we, uh, we don't have a, a, a sample Android project in hand today, so I'm just going to create a new Android application right here. We're going to create a very basic Android application uh, on the fly to demonstrate this product. So um, I'm going to give it a name. We're going to call it uh, MQA Demo. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just use the default Android SDK, whatever I have here. Uh, it's not particularly relevant at the time. Um, uh, it more than meets the uh, minimum requirements for uh, MQA to work. So we'll hit next. I'm going to choose the default clip art again. It's just a basic application, next, and finish. And when I'm done here, I should have a very basic application, which should show up in my Project Explorer. There it is. So now we have it over here in my Project Explorer. Very basic Android application. It contains source files. It contains a manifest, all the things you'd expect in an Android application. Um, I'm on a Mac, so if I jump over to my Finder here, you'll find that I also have the MQA demo in my uh, in my Eclipse home directory. So you know, if I want to go start looking at the source code myself by hand, I can do that right here in this folder. So let's jump into the documentation. Um, first thing is, is we're going to open up this pre-production tutorial right here. And uh, step one, I need to download the client libraries now. I'm going to go back here, page. The client library is right here. There are two versions. There are two flavors. There's pre-production for when you're still in testing, and then there's the lighter weight, much more um, elegant production library from when you've moved into uh, into actually uh, putting your product out into an app store. Um, the big difference between them is the pre-production library is put together lots of data. It's not intrusive, it's not heavy, but it's also not necessarily light either. It's meant to give you a very complete picture of how your application is performing in your testing. The production library is meant to be very small, very light, very simple, and not be a weight on the application itself. Even though the pre-production isn't very heavy, the production is even lighter. Uh, and that's good for when your application is actually in production and you want MQA to be, uh, to be in the background and silent until there's actually a problem. So like I said, I'm just going to go ahead and download this pre-production library right here. Uh, it's going to pop into, uh, into my downloads folder. So let's just grab this file and I'm going to stick it over here into uh, my Eclipse workspace and I'm going to unzip it. And uh, I get this IBM MQA folder here that contains the library itself. So let's go back to the tutorial that we were reading. Oops. Go into the pre-production tutorial. Uh, step two, you know, once you've uh, downloaded this application, you need to add it as an Eclipse project. Um, this is kind of the way that uh, this, particular, uh, this particular library works. So we're going to go to File. We're going to go to Import. We're going to uh, add existing Android code into our workspace. I'm going to browse to it. I'm using a Mac so I can do this cool trick, which I'm going to stop to do right now. Uh -huh. And I'm going to grab the, uh, the MQA library that I just downloaded. I hit open, I hit finish, but uh, we've got it installed or imported. So again, the, uh, the magic stuff here. Didn't really like it in the Eclipse Workspace folder. Really wanted it in another folder completely. So there we go. Um, lesson learned. I'll figure out why that is another time. So um, very quickly, now that we've got it imported uh, in, uh, into the folder, we just need to add it to the first project. So 
Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the demo that I created here at the beginning, the sample Android application, and we're going to jump into the Android section here, and uh, we're going to click Add, and here it has the code we want to add. We're going to hit OK and OK, and uh, at this point, what's happened is that the Android project, that, I'm sorry, the IBM MQA library that we, uh, we have imported into this project is now contained within the demo application we've created. If I go back in here, you'll see that it's listed. It's got a check mark next to it. It's now considered to be an included library uh, in our master project. Um, for someone developing an application, they would go through the same steps for their sample application, uh, whatever that sample application may be. So now we've got it included, and uh, the, uh, the next step is to go modify our manifest file. Now, Android uses what are called manifest files, or XML files that contain um, uh, information about how, uh, how the app should behave, the different settings for it, the different you know, configuration items for it, and so on. Um, there are several different manifest settings that, uh, that MQA requires in order to be able to execute. And uh, there are many different options, and the user has a lot of control over different pieces of configuration. Um, I would encourage anyone interested in developing for this to go and read the complete documentation here, and they can make choices about what they would like to include and not include. However, the first thing that you want to include is you want to include an activity tag within the application tag in your IDM manifest. So again, I'm going to copy and paste uh, just this XML snippet right here. I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to open the manifest file for my project. Uh, I'm going to actually jump into the, uh, the manifest.xml portion. Here it is. Here's the application tag. And uh, I'm going to put this, uh, this activity inside of here. So we'll just add a line. There it is. It's not particularly invented well. Let's see if we can get a clip to fix that. I don't want to fix it, but we'll just make it look neat enough. So uh, there we go. We've added this activity tag inside the application object. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to add these permissions. Now, I'm not going to explain all of them. Again, I would encourage you to read through the documentation to figure out which permissions are relevant for your application, if all of them are, if it's, uh, only a few of them are, uh, et cetera. However, I'm just going to take all of the relevant permissions. They need to go inside the manifest tag in your, uh, in your uh, application. So we're going to just paste those up here. And there they go and we're going to save the manifest file. And uh, those are the modifications to the manifest file. So again, just two, I added an activity object, or an activity section, I added some permissions. Uh, and again, as a developer, there are some different configurations you can include and exclude within these, and uh, that can help you, uh, help you get started. The next step is to actually go modify our code. Um, so over here, we have uh, this main activity.java file. And uh, mainactivity.java is essentially kind of the, the beginning of uh, where an Android project begins its execution. Um, so when you go and modify your code, there's basically just a few things you need to add in order to uh, in order to kickstart Android or kickstart um, uh, I'm sorry IBM MQA within an Android application. Um, so you know first thing we do is we're going to copy and paste kind of this line here for our application key, and we're going to put this inside the main activity class. Um, so here it is, again, the main activity class. I'm just going to pop that in there, and uh, we're good to go. We'll replace this once we have a final key for this project, and we'll go get that in a second. The next thing we want to do, and again, this is explained within the application, but the key thing here is this app hand start new session method. Uh, the app hand start new session method is what actually kickstarts IBM MQA into, into functioning. Um, so you do that actually in, in two steps. You use an, a configuration object right here, and again, you use this app head starting session method right here. All of this is explained in extreme detail outside of the tutorial. Uh, for someone getting started, they can copy and paste this and actually be off to the races. If they want to learn more, and I'm just going to quickly jump into this, I'm just going to open the starting a session document in a new tab. You can see that there's complete documentation explaining each of the configuration options, what they do, how they behave, along with examples and information about how to actually go forward and do this on a very complete basis. I'm not going to jump into that right now. I encourage you again, if you're interested in learning more, to go to that document and read it. For right now, however, I'm just going to take this configuration uh, object that we're creating here and the start new session line here. And we're just going to drop that into the, again, we're dropping it into the onCreate method 
for the app. Uh, so here we have the onCreate method. We'll just put that in there right there. We're getting some errors. We'll resolve those in just a second. But let me give you a real quick hint about what's going on. We're setting up a configuration object. We're giving it the app key that we have here. Um, let's just make sure the errors are ones that... Uh, yep. Great. We're giving it the app key here. We're giving it the, uh, the mode information here that it's going to use. We're giving it a couple other settings. We're building it and including it. And then down here we have the uh, app hint start new session method. Again, we call it on um, this activity that we're in right now, and we pass it the configuration object that we just created up here. So for a developer, I don't think this is wildly complicated. We haven't completed the steps yet, and there are a few more things that we're going to do to, to tie this all together. But for a developer, this should be fairly straightforward. Adding your application key, I'm going to skip this step for right now, but we'll go get an application key in a second. And the next step is to add a couple of on start and on stop methods to all of our activities. Now, again, the way Android works is that it has separate activity objects for different parts of the application. And what we're doing here is we're essentially making sure that when those activity objects are entered or exited, that IBM MQA is informed and told about it. This is important for it to be able to uh, properly do the bug reporting so that when you submit a bug from the application, it comes through with all the information about the application, the screenshots and everything else. And in order for all of that to work well, it just needs to be able to, um, to know where in the application it is at the moment. Uh, there are actually a couple of different ways of accomplishing this goal. I'm not going to go into them again. That's, uh, I, I think for developers who are developing, they will have their preferences for, uh, for what they want to do, whether they would like to use option number one, or option number two for accomplishing this particular step. Uh, for me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add these on start and on stop methods into my main activity class, uh, just like I have here. I'm just going to paste them in. And all we're doing is we're overriding the, uh, the default methods within this class. We're saying, you know, go ahead and execute on the default methods. And in addition, Call the, uh, call the on start and on stop method of IBM MQA so that it is also aware that this activity has been entered or exited. And again, a developer will have, uh, will have a, a, a preference as to whether they want to use this approach or option two, and I encourage them to go through the documentation to learn more. Last thing we want to do, actually it's not the last thing, but one of the final things we want to do is we want to import the, uh, the IBM MQA library. So I'm just going to copy the import statements here. I'm going to go up to the top here where we have all our imports. By pasting these in, that magically resolves all of the little errors we saw because we've now imported the library. Uh, everything should be included as well because we went to the step at the beginning where we actually added the library to the project so it was aware of it. So we've imported the library. And then finally, we have the option of importing logging libraries. Now, this is an extra step you don't have to include, but it's, one of, it's a really nice one. In one of our early demos, we talked about how when you log to, uh, to your application, you're using Logcat, you're creating log events, that uh, it sure would be nice to be able to see those when the application is running in the wild, as opposed to just being limited to, oh, I have it attached as an emulator in Eclipse, and all I can see is Logcat down here. Um, so if you simply replace the android.util.log class with the IBM MQA log class, and we're going to go do that right now. Actually, I don't even see that we've included the log class. If we simply replace that, that's interesting, why am I getting an error there? The import, oh, we never used it. Okay, that's fine. Uh, if you simply replace that, all of your logging methods in the future even, and you don't even have to rename or replace the existing Android logging method. All of your logging methods in the future will actually go to IBM MQA uh, as well as Blogcat. Uh, that has the advantage that you know, you'll be able to see the log messages of your application running in the wild. It will be obvious and apparent you know, what's happening, where the application or what the application is doing, and you can track it in the MQA control panel. In addition, you still have the ability to look at Logcat in Eclipse and be able to see the log messages there as well. So it doesn't override or replace that. It actually supplements it. 
So we recommend that in any, uh, any Android application using IBM MQA that you absolutely consider including the MQA logging class as opposed to the default Android logging class just because it offers you the same methods, the same functionality, but you get a lot more power with them. Because in, if, in addition to going to, uh, to uh, uh, LogCat, it also goes to the MQA control panel. And that is it. With the exception of getting an application key, we have added uh, MQA into this app. So, I mean, realistically, if I hit compile here and I haven't made another mistake, um, and I'm not claiming to be perfect, I'm sure there will be something, but if I hit compile, yeah, we have to save it. Yes, go ahead and save that. Uh, and then it does its thing. In a second here, it should fire up an emulator. Oh! -ho! It worked the first time. Actually, it didn't work the first time because I had my little uh, embarrassing folder import problem, but it is working. We have an emulator. It compiles. It's, uh, that's uh, really great. So, this is the basic of including, these are the basics of including the application. Now, we can complete the process if we get an app key. Uh, and this is where, I'm going to log into the demo account really quickly. Um, Roger, if you'd like to take over and say a few things real quick, um, I will come back and I will complete this process and we'll have uh, we'll be able to show off the... Um sure, yeah, I can uh, certainly um, kind of slow down the, the pace. In the 15 minutes, you were able to do that. You instrumented the application, which is what we expect uh, uh, every uh, user of MQA to do. Uh, certainly, you know, it may not take everyone 15 minutes. In fact, it took me about an hour to do instrumentation and I have not used the product from an instrumentation standpoint before, only the end user capability. So I want to take you through that quick tour, and then we'll recap back with Sam's uh, uh, build of that application, since oftentimes build is like watching water boil. <laughs> so, uh, so, but Stanton pointed out some very key things. Um, the MQA tutorial page uh, is very good. In fact, that's what I utilized for the sample application that uh, I built. And certainly, you have some choices to make. Uh, what platform do you want to instrument your app for? Would it be Android, iOS, or Windows Phone? What capabilities you want to uh, support? Um, and in this case, I just wanted to do a little sample of some of the bug reporting. Bug reporting, as you can tell, is available in the pre-production libraries. So your choices are here to uh, pick either pre-production or production libraries for MQA, and then download those particular libraries, and I'll get into the details of that as well. And then finally, choose what application you want to try this on. Now, there is a Hello World app that's part of the open beta that you can um, get access to. Uh, I believe it's on uh, GitHub. And uh, um, But I decided that, gee, we're already using for some of our own internal demonstrations for other purposes around mobile. We're already using something called JKE Bank, which is a little um, banking application that I'll talk about here in a minute. But uh, I decided to instrument that application. So in the platform decision, again, I chose uh, to actually use uh, an application that could be targeted to multiple platforms. And that's being done through a product at IBM called Worklight. It's an Eclipse plugin, uh, so it, it runs in the IDE. And as the picture shows over here, it provides a simplicity of one. You can have one development environment and one code base with a different variant in it to develop and maintain an application for multiple mobile platforms. And, of course, uh, this runs on multiple um, uh, platforms, Worklight itself, runs on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Incidentally, the same ones that Rational Team Concert runs on, and there's some advantages to that because there are some nifty ways to do remote builds. Uh, and and uh, what else is interesting here is that you can actually build an application for any of those targets uh, from any other environment. So within that Eclipse environment, you can build and target an application um, uh, for any one of the platforms. But as, it, as the uh, documentation specifically calls out due to restrictions set by Apple, you can only compile the, the iOS product only on a Mac. So 
Uh, but that's where you can take advantage of capabilities in something like Rational Team Concert. If you have a Mac that's in your server farm, you can actually use Rational Team Concert to distribute a build over to that Mac environment and leverage that as well. And of course, hey, work like Studio. Yes. I have the I have things set up. So whenever you're ready. Okay. All right. Uh, let me let me uh, talk about this so we can kind of recap what you've done to this point. Um, and uh, and of course uh, you can get started with Worklight if you're not familiar with it. There's a download link there. There's uh, a pre-configured environment that IBMers can utilize here that has this application in it as well. So in terms of mobile quality assurance, uh, again I chose the pre-production library, which is great for your uh, putting the application in the hands of your testers, and certainly by default. Um, uh, the uh, testers, when they use the app, will be asked to log in to the mobile quality assurance so they can tell who reported the bug as you submit those bugs. Uh, the production libraries certainly have just a, a slightly different ex user experience when uh, the application runs and that data is reported anonymously. So you saw uh, Stanton add or import the MQA libraries again. If you follow the steps from the tutorial, I did exactly that, and simply right-clicked on the um, on the projects project uh, in my project tree in Eclipse, selected import, picked out the Android uh, source project uh, that uh, the MQA library represented, and then finished the completion of that import uh, through the steps again shown in the tutorial. Next, I modified it, modified the manifest, the Android manifest, also, again, from the tutorial. And, again, these links and slides are available at slideshare.net now, so you can download those now if you want. Uh, now, you saw Stanton modify the manifest through just a basic XML editor. And yeah, I'll, I'll add that you can modify the manifest however you're comfortable with, and you can use yeah. the WYSIWYG approach. I use the HTML editor because realistically you're copying and pasting just, you know, a, a handful of lines. Uh, but if you're more comfortable with the WYSIWYG approach, then you're free to use it. Okay, cool. And uh, what I'm talking about here is that actually the, the uh, Worklight IDE has a graphical form that makes this a little bit simpler to enter in the information into the um, raw XML file. So if you're not comfortable with the XML uh, raw format, you can utilize these forms that make it easy that way. Uh, for the novice like me, that actually helped a lot. So, <laughs> uh, And then finally, um, you know, the last few steps that uh, you saw Stanton do, start the MQA session, so injecting this code into your source file, adding your application key. This is your unique identifier for your application. So as it engages with the server, it knows where to put the uh, uh, the bug reports or other associated information with that application. And then starting and stopping uh, the components for the activity, and then importing the libraries. Uh, again, these steps were very clearly spelled out in the tutorial. And if you are having problems with that, there is a feedback button on the MQA site. Simply report your issues in, or share your information, share your um, questions or concerns here in the um, today's session or in the study group uh, uh, website. And then I went ahead and executed a build, and the build activated uh, or, or built the uh, APK file, which I just shuttled over to my phone. I also ran it in the emulator. When you uh, run it on the, uh, in either mode and invoke the gesture, or if you can't invoke the gesture, the emulator that I used, which was the Android virtual machine, I was able to just swipe down the top and up came an option to invoke the MQA interface. And that's what this looks like. So it gave me a screenshot editor where I can do a markup uh, using the drawing tool, or I could obfuscate certain parts of the screen if there's sensitive information. And then you click on the uh, checkbox and submit the item, and it also provides you a, a data entry form so you can either enter in text or voice record some text if you're uh, using a phone that supports that capability. 
and then hit the little flyer uh, send button uh, on the subsequent screen, and it would enter in that defect. So within an hour, I was able to go ahead and do that uh, capability. So I'm going to transfer control back over to you here, Stanton. So give me a moment here, and then we'll open it up for questions. All right, thank you, Roger. Um, so I'm going to share my screen one more time here. Let's give you a, uh, a look at what I'm doing here. Let's see if this goes smoothly again. Just a second. All right, I am sharing again. So once again, we created the application. I think Roger did a great job of recapping what we've done so far. The last step I want to show you is, the last step I want to show you is what happens when you need to actually put in an application key. So again, we had sort of a sample key or application key goes here. That's not really the final key for the application. The key is very important because the key is what says this application belongs to me. This application's data should go into my control panel. This application is, uh, is uh, recognized by IBM MQA. And getting a key is pretty straightforward. So I've logged into the IBM MQA control panel. Uh, if you were on one of our earlier demos, you probably saw this and you saw us jump into the Company Contacts app. I'm going to add a new app. I'm just going to call it MQA Android Demo. Uh, I've given it a name right here. I'm going to click Android. I'm not going to invite any collaborators right now. If I were working with a team of you and you were all going to be testing my application, I would certainly put your email addresses in here. But right now, I'm going to leave that blank. This is more of a demo of the uh, of the uh, uh, in, you know, in, uh, integrating with the key. So I'm going to hit register app, and uh, you'll notice the very first thing it gives me here is my application key. So I'm going to copy that key. I'm simply going to come back here. I'm going to paste it in. I'm going to save this file. We're going to hit run one more time. If I go over to my Android emulator, I'm going to do some, uh, some song and dance over here. And hopefully at this point, if I unlock the emulator, I jump in, I have the app running right here. Again, if you were a, uh, if you were a user of this application, you would be presented with a list of people. Um, in this particular demo, we actually had me. We had uh, Tina, who's uh, one, of the, uh, one, of our, uh, uh, one of IBM's um, uh, very smart uh, marketing people. And uh, I click on uh, Tina, and now, you know, for the purposes of this application, I am Tina, and it's a fairly simple Hello World application. So there we go. There we have it. We've gone from start to finish with actually uh, instrumenting an application, running it, actually having it set up and running on uh, an Android device. Even though I can't seem to find it, it is here. I know it is because the Android device says it is in the menu. Um, and uh, that is a, a pretty good perspective of how this actually should work. Um, for the developers out there who are actually uh, 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 familiar with, you know, the, the pain and troubles of developing a, an application for Android, many of these, I'm sure, will seem to be familiar uh, familiar issues. Um, but uh, for, you know, in general, actually getting IBM MQA up and running within an application is very simple. You know, I got it done in 15 minutes, simply adding a few lines of code, adding the library into your project, importing a few things, and actually having it up and running on your demo environment. And uh, yeah, there it is, but I can't actually execute it from within this. Is there a way yeah, to no, no problem, uh, Stan. Uh, you know, I think uh, we've, we've been through uh, your example. I talked a little bit about the example I have. If anyone simply wants to download the pre-configured one that I ran and built uh, prior to that, uh, visit the – well, I'll, po I'll post that link here uh, in the webcast um, chat – visit that blog and you'll see the link for the APK and you can just try it out for yourself. Uh, short of that, Stan, if we're ready to open for questions. I would love to take questions. Yeah, let's uh, let's uh, go ahead and you can, well, no need to stop sharing, but uh, if you wanted to just stop sharing, we can put the question slide back up. If you have a question for any of us on this call, uh, if you want to ask it here over the phone, hit star six to unmute your line, or you can just ask it here in the chat window. I've actually found the right version of the application now. So, um, 
this is Tina. I think I wanted to make a comment. Maybe just you know, um, I got a question from a audience who just pinged me. So you don't. I mean, we don't have to use the um, the emulator. And I think most people um, who have used emulator, knowing that the Android emulator is actually terribly slow, so um, you can actually easily um, get this build distributed to yourself or your coworkers and then they can install that in a real device and and try that um try the bug reporting or all the capability from a real device um a standing is that correct that is completely correct so you know the reason that we go to the emulator step here um and just the emulator step is is that it's visible on the screen and it proves to you that it compiles um, in reality, I think a developer is much more likely to have an Android device plugged into their into their laptop and configured to connect directly to Eclipse, so that when they hit compile in Eclipse, it actually uploads it directly onto you know their Galaxy S3 or their Nexus or whatever they have sitting next to them on their desk. Uh, they may actually have several sitting next to them on their desk, um, and they may be using that as their as their initial smoke test of whether or not the application compiled, did it work, did it start, did I did I make horrible horrible mistakes? The very next step after that is once they've got it working on their phone or perhaps their emulator, if they're still using an emulator, once they have it working the way they expect, it starts. They haven't made a, a horrible horrible error. It seems to be going well. Um, it passes their, their basic developer level smoke test, maybe it passes their test automation. The very next thing they're going to do is they're going to upload it to MQA and distribute it out to their testers. Uh, and we went through that process in one of our previous demonstrations, but it's, you know, it's simple. You simply take the APK you compiled and upload it to MQA, and MQA begins the process of distributing that, uh, that build out to the testing community. So from a developer's point of view, it's you know a constant cycle of iteration. I make a change to the application, I add a feature, I uh, I create something new, I fix something, uh, I compile it, I may run some automation tests on it. It's going to pass my level of acceptance testing that I've gone through uh, up to that point. Uh, it works, and then I'm going to drag and drop it into MQA to push it out to my testing community to go through the next additional more sophisticated steps of testing to make sure that it works on all levels that it should. Okay, again, if you have any questions, hit star six to unmute your phone or ask your question. I did post the link to the chat um, for my experiences, plus the pre-canned image, plus the pre uh built APK if you just want to download that to your phone and try that out on your Android. Are there any other questions? If not, then I will I will take questions here in the next uh, minute or three as we go along and finish the last couple of slides. But as always, we'll have a survey, a brief survey that's coming soon to your inbox. You can certainly watch um, uh, attendee uh, Lee Williamson, our Chief Technology Officer for, uh, for Rational. Uh, he has a tutorial video that he put together, and uh, you can use this link to, to visit that. And, of course, uh, try out the open beta yourself. So visit the landing page, which will take you to that little Try It button, which will allow you to enroll in the site. Our next session, next week's session, will be focused on over-the-air build distribution. So we'll talk about that, and uh, thank you in advance to Tina for leading that session next week, as I will be uh, delivering some training. And then something new that we've just announced is a mobile learning circle. So if you're not familiar with uh, IBM's mobile initiatives and um, more specifically rational broad uh, set of mobile uh, supporting application development tools, you can visit our learning circle and kickstart one of the activity templates that are in there for to help you uh, learn a few things in just a very simple checklist format. So with that, I want to thank you all today and give you one last chance for any questions. Going once, twice. Thank you all for attending today. This concludes the call. Have a great day. Thank you.